In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the things that your pencils and the pencil pack can do, as well as uh, just general smooth tone, which is the technique that you'll be doing this project, the value and edge project in, as well as um, just kind of showing you just some techniques and things that you can do to help yourself um, as you start your value and edge project. So first I'm gonna begin with pencils. This is my personal pack of pencils. You might have a different uh, brand name. Mine happens to be Stettler, Mars Lumograph. Um, I'm a big fan of Stettler. So if you guys are ever wondering what kind to get, I would recommend them. There's a lot of um, architectural draftsman kind of materials that they create. Um, this tri-scales also, uh, Stettler as well. Um, but there's Derwent, there's uh, Lyra, there's a bunch of different kinds. There's Tombow. Tombow is really good too. So there's a lot of different kinds of, of pencil brands. Find what works best for you. I can't remember if you bought the PCC pack, which brand of pack is in there, but I'll be demonstrating um, my pencils here for you. You'll notice maybe it's written on the pack. Um, it'll certainly be on each individual pencil. They are labeled things like 5B or H or 3B or 2H or F or HB. All of these labels mean something and it deals with the hardness or softness of the graphite that creates the pencil inside the wood barrel there. So B is bold, H is hard. And I can bring these up here a little bit closer to the camera so you can see. Oh, maybe it won't. It's not focusing on the pencil, that's okay. You can see it in your own pack of pencils when you look at them. So B is bold, the higher the number associated with the B, the more soft, the more bold the graphite will look. And so this is my 5B here. This is actually what I used to demonstrate uh, my perspective lesson recently because I knew it was gonna give a bold line. So if I were to, and I'm not putting too much pressure down, but I'm just going back and forth. It's putting a nice layer of Darkish graphite down on the page. Your HB, fun fact, is the same as your number two pencil. So this is gonna be just your general, general pencil that you would do for everyday writing. You can run to Walmart or Target and get your number two pencil. That's gonna be HB. Your H's are super hard with their graphite, so they're going to be super light. Like you might not even be able to see that barely in the video. <laughs> I can bring this page up to it. Oh, almost slipped. So when the graphite is super hard, it's not gonna be able to transfer itself to the Bristol board as easily as if the graphite is soft. And that is why, so you can see that a little bit. This is my 5B, this is my HB, and that was my 4H. So you can tell the difference there, how each of them does something different. The higher the number with the H, the more hard it's going to be, or the harder it's going to be. A lot of people, when they draft things that require a very light pencil line, they will use their higher H's. Um, if they need to draw something that's going to keep a pencil tip that's not going to dull out very fast, use a high H. The graphite is so hard that it actually takes a while before the pencil tip starts to dull. In contrast, it is very quick for your upper Bs, your upper B pencils to dull themselves, which honestly is why my two shortest pencils are my 6B and my 5B because I've used them not only so much that I need to sharpen them, but because the graphite is so soft and I keep using them, they just keep getting dull and they keep needing to be sharpened all the time. So they are pretty short compared to the other pencils there. So when it comes to your project, and I don't have the exact project source right here with me, but you have five boxes up on top and I can quickly, let me grab, um, I'll just use my mechanical pencil. You're going to have your five boxes. Sketching that out really quickly. And then you have your shapes and I'm not going to um, do all the shapes here. Oh, that, that's right, they are all in. Your shapes are in two point perspective pretty much. Okay, let's 
So that's good for now. So what I have here is something that um, slightly resembles what your project is. Remember, you can trace. Um, yay, <laughs> we are allowing you to trace um, for the shapes. Um, you can either measure out everything or you can just trace everything. It's the printed out piece. If you print it out at 100%, it just fits to page. It's just slightly off. Um, I was mistaken when I was talking to my in-person students today about what the specs are gonna be, if you should measure it or not. Um, because of my mistake, I'm just letting all of you guys choose if you would like to measure everything out perfectly, like how the specs show, or if you just wanna trace everything exactly how it is when you print it out. Either way is fine. Again, the difference is quite minute, so it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, and I will remember <laughs> this issue for, for future years that I teach. But um, you guys can have that choice. Now, once you have all of these things traced down, quick note about that, please be very careful when you trace. I mentioned this in the lecture with the slideshow, um, and I'm going to reiterate it again. Please be careful, use a straight edge where you need to use a straight edge and be careful and take your time with the curves where you need to, okay? It's very important. You do not wanna be unprofessional and you don't want to have draftsmanship, professionalism, points knocked off of your, off of your piece. So how you would go about doing this is you need to honestly practice with your pencils and get the feel for it. You can do this many different ways. You uh, see that you have on one end, you've got 0%. I think this is the 0%. And this over here is the 100%. Okay, so I'm just putting that down so that y'all can see that there. And the 100% is gonna be as dark as dark can go. The 0% is already done for you, it's pure white. So make sure, by the way, that this remains pure white, all right? If you need to tape it off, if you need to put tape around your squares or around the hard edges, if you need to put lots of tiny pieces of tape to curve around a curve so that you can keep your draftsmanship where it needs to be so it's pristine, that's fine. Do keep in mind though, I do warn my students, um, if you put down tape, it says it's artist tape and it says it's, it's masking tape and that it's safe to peel up and in general it is, but you always have that piece of tape that's going to peel up and accidentally rip off some of the top layer of your Bristol board. It just, it happens all the time. So be careful with that. So as you look at your 100% and your 0%, this is the strategy I would use as you start with your five boxes up at the top. Use a very soft, dark, bold pencil. So I've got my 6B, drastically needs a sharpening there. But I'm going to fill this in I would keep your hand, your pencils probably are not going to be this small because I've been using these pencils a lot. You're probably gonna have more shaft to the pencil than mine has. So I would keep your hand far back on the pencil and I'd make sure that it is sharpened to where you can use the side of your pencil. You don't want to take your pencil and go straight down and start digging into the bristle board because that's gonna cause craters and you do not want that because as you're digging into the bristle board, you won't be able to bring up anything that you might need to erase. So you're gonna get this as dark as possible. That is 100%. Now I understand that there is a disconnect a little bit because you have printed out something that used black ink and there's no way that the graphite pencils that you have probably could match the exact dark value that the black ink gave. And that's okay. The point is value is relative. And that doesn't mean there are no wrong answers to the correct value. That means the relationships need to be the same. And so when it comes to this, what that means is you need to get your 100% square as dark as possible with your graphite pencil. And then your 75, which is right here, needs to be the step lighter than your 100% in your piece as what you see the relationship hold true in the source photo. So remember to squint. I would venture to say if you squint and if you got this square as dark as absolutely possible, you'd be able to get super close to what the 100% is even on your printed piece, on the printed picture. 
But remember, the point is get it as dark as possible and then all of the other steps that incrementally get lighter, they need to get lighter to the same level at the same step rate as what your source picture has. That's why you're asking yourself those comparison questions. Does it need to go a little bit darker to be an equal step lighter? Does it need to go a little bit lighter? And this technique that we're using is called smooth tone. I'll be able to find a video online and um, give you guys the link to that so you guys can see a little bit better of a tutorial of smooth tone. But basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm taking my pencil and I am, I'm gonna enlarge it up here, but I'm doing sweeping ovals, okay? And they're very close together, so that's kind of a, a zoom up of what I'm doing. You don't want to do this, okay? Don't do that, that's super messy, that's not professional, and that's bad draftsmanship. Take this and take your time, put down a blanket layer of graphite. Allow the nice texture of your pencil touching the Bristol board to give it that nice quality going on there. Be careful, by the way, I'm starting to get this now, I see in here. When you don't sharpen your pencil, if you start getting down to the wood, that's gonna start scratching the Bristol board. So don't let it get to that point. I'm gonna transition to my 5B, which is a little bit harder, therefore a little bit lighter, but it'll still help me get the job done here. Think about this logically. You see how there's some texture going on here. There's some very slight white specks in here. Just by nature of the Bristol board texture with the graphite, there's, you see some, some white specks just all over the place. The more you can cover those in, the darker it's gonna be. Remember, this is about covering a blanket dust layer of graphite. You don't need to dig in hard for this. You can dig in a little hard, but don't create craters or trenches in your Bristol board. Okay, once you have your darkest dark block, this is the next step I would take. You have your 0%, you have your 100%. Now begin your middle one, this is your 50%. And I would do that because it's gonna be easier for you to squint and judge what's a value that seems to be equally in the middle between what I have for my 100% and what the zero percent is, which is nothing. So I'm not gonna do this whole box here, but I'm gonna just start putting something in. And as I do that, uh, I'm gonna offer you some, some techniques. You can use a different pencil if you would like to get some of these boxes lighter, or you can use the same pencil and you can choose to vary how much pressure you put on the pencil with your hand. I personally use the same pencil for the whole project. That's like how I always have been. I like that better because of how it, it gives me a really nice texture. Sometimes, if you notice here, I'm gonna draw your attention back up to here, pun intended. Um, we have this texture going on from the 5B Notice that it's a different texture with the 4H and with the HB. These look like they're thinner a little bit with their stroke lines. This looks like it's a thicker stroke line. So when you're doing this, make sure that you don't combine pencil kinds in a way that that's going to distract or cause issues with your draftsmanship. If you use the same pencil for the whole thing and if you merely change the value or how light or dark it is based on your the pressure that you're putting on the pencil that i believe is going to give you the best chance of having nice draftsmanship and nothing's going to look like it's disunified okay so i'm going to um, demonstrate something here what happens if uh oh i accidentally did something a little too dark in there this is where your kneaded eraser is huge help Take your kneaded eraser and start dabbing up. Now, there's something I did though, maybe you guys caught on to this, I totally just dug in a trench. Now it doesn't look like it's a huge trench. It's not like I was scraping into it with the wood of my pencil. It was literally just the tip of my pencil that dented in the Bristol board. And even though I'm trying to erase it, there's some of it 
that you can see almost like an outline of it. So be very careful when you put pressure down on your pencil that you're just putting a nice layer of graphite resting atop the bristol board and you're not actually digging in there. So for those of you who are a little bit more heavy handed, that might be a little bit more difficult for you. Okay, but um, that is how you'd go about doing this. Squint, see when you squint if this matches the relationship you see between the values in your, your source photo. So as I squint at this, it looks like, if this is 100 and if this is zero, this looks like it's a little too dark to be perfectly in the middle between them. So if that's the case, you can take your nudity eraser and dab and pick up. This is why your nudity eraser is going to be your best friend, probably from here on out. And this is a process I call molding. You have your layer, of gray, your layer of graphite down. You have a base value to work from. So it's clay on the potter's wheel, to use that analogy. And now I'm gonna go back and forth until I get exactly what I need for my value. If I need to go darker, I'll add more layers of graphite with a soft pencil. If it's a little too dark and I need to go lighter, I'll come back in with my kneaded eraser and I'll dab that back up. Now, keep in mind your kneaded eraser can only do so much. If I were to really hard try to erase this whole thing perfectly back to how the Bristol board paper was, I won't be able to. There's still gonna be a little bit there. You can try with your vinyl eraser, but chances are once it's there, there's going to be a slight ghosting of permanence. So be careful with that as well. Let's transition down to these shapes here. What you're gonna do is the exact same thing that you did up here. You're gonna match the values, where you see the values, that's where you need to put them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually just outline this guy a little bit better so you can see him in the video better. Okay, there we go. When you trace, make sure you have uh, even line weight. Make sure that it looks nice when you trace. I mentioned that before, I just wanna mention it again. Remember, I don't have the source photo next to me, so forgive me if this is a little bit darker than what's actually there. I have a little bit of a dark spot here, so I'm just gonna carefully dab up. A little goes a long way with your kneaded eraser when you're dabbing up, okay? So we've got a nice, nice layer there, graphite. And now we're working with edges. Remember, edges show the substance, like the structure of what it is. Is it curved or is it straight? Is it a hard planal change? Is it a soft planal change? So with this guy, remember the form principle. We've got the shadow side and the light side is up top because the light's coming from the top. And how I like to do this is I like to just lay down a layer of graphite, just get something down there and then I can mold from there. Okay, so I've got something down there. Okay, I've got this. Okay, at this point, now I'm going to look at my source photo and see, okay, where do I need to go darker for that core shadow? Desperately do need to sharpen this guy, don't I? Remember that nothing in the shadow side is going to be lighter than anything on the light side. So I'm just gonna keep molding. Let's say I, I was too dark down here, right there. Oh, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a good example of when you don't sharpen your pencil and when you get that wood that starts digging in. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a white, a very fine white trench that we're seeing here, because when I outlined this before I started shading it in, it accidentally dug into there. So keep that in mind. That's because I don't have a sharpener readily available right here. So it's, I've just been kind of pushing through using this pencil, but don't do that. Take the time to sharpen the pencil so that does not happen. Oop, I'm trying to get my thing to not be wobbly there. All right, so let's say I went too dark in some areas. I can dab that up with my kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser does a nice job giving me a nice soft edge as well. Like for example, what's going on up here? If I need to soften that edge, 
soften the edge so it's a little bit more of a gradient. And if I accidentally went too far over, no big deal, come back with your pencil. And this again is part of the molding process, a very light touch, bring it back up. And until you get the hang of it well, you might find yourself going back and forth a lot and that's okay. There really is no right or wrong when it comes to this sort of thing, except to match the correct values and the correct edges. But when it comes to the execution, it's really just practice. And that's why I can demo as long as I can, and it really doesn't matter. You have to be the one to take your pencils, try them out, feel out your kneaded eraser, feel out how your pencils lay down on the page, feel out how your kneaded eraser can pick things up, how powerful is it, how much do you need to keep going back and forth, and that's going to be your best teacher of how you can how you can shade well. And that's why this is a good introductory project because from here on out, all the other projects, we are going to incorporate shading with them. And this one, we want you to practice, match your values, match them exactly, squint, always squint. Squint for these shapes down here, squint for these boxes up here. Always squint, match and compare values, keep the relationships the same. And that is the end.